Welcome to the show. This is a simple model. The sun is represented by this LED lamp. The earth is represented by this globe. This disc shows the month of a year. This changes as the model rotates. The inclination of this shaft to this disc is 66.5 degrees so, this axis makes an angle of 23.5 degrees with the normal to the ecliptic plane. Here, Moon is mounted on a bent arm. Rotation of a bent arm can be prevented by fastening this grub screw. The revolution of the Earth around the Sun has to be done manually, by rotating the arm counterclockwise, looking down from top. This pointer indicates the direction in which the arm has to be moved. Now let's see how this model can be used to demonstrate these phenomena. 1. Fixed orientation of Earth's axis of rotation. 2. Seasons. 3. Variations in day and night durations. 4. Phases of the Moon. And 5. Lunar and solar eclipses. Now let's see the fixed orientation of axis of rotation of Earth. This inclined shaft, which corresponds to the axis of rotation of Earth is fixed on the pulley, which is free to rotate. This axis makes an angle of 23.5 degrees with the normal to the ecliptic plane, means the plane of the motion of Earth around the Sun. Now let's see one entire rotation. You can note carefully that the inclination of Earth's axis is unchanged throughout the year. Everywhere the inclination is 23.5 degrees. Now let us understand the reason behind the change of seasons. Look at the model from top angle. We'll mark four different positions of Earth relative to Sun. The days corresponding to these positions is indicated on screen. Let's discuss about these four positions in details. 1. Summer Solstice. Here the model is in position corresponding to the 21st of June, as indicated by the pointer on the disc. This is the summer solstice. Notice that at noon, the light from the lamp is falling normally at the Tropic of Cancer corresponding to latitude 23.5 degrees north, and as we go away from this latitude the light falls in an inclined manner. Therefore, the northern hemisphere experiences summer, and the southern experiences winter, during the same period. 2. Autumnal Equinox. This position is corresponding to the 23rd of September, as indicated by the pointer on the disc. This is the autumnal equinox. The light from the lamp is falling normally that is at 90 degrees, on the equator. This is the beginning of autumn in the Northern Hemisphere, and beginning of spring in the Southern Hemisphere. 3. Winter Solstice. This position is corresponding to the 21st of December, as indicated by the point on the disc. This is the Winter Solstice. At noon, the light from the lamp is falling normally at the Tropic of Capricorn corresponding to a latitude of 23.5 degrees south. And as we go away from this latitude a light falls on an inclined manner. Therefore, the northern hemisphere experiences winter, and the southern hemisphere experiences summer. 4. Vernal Equinox. The Earth is now placed corresponding to the 21st of March. This is called a vernal equinox. At noon, again the light from the lamp is falling at 90 degrees on the equator. This is the beginning of spring in the Northern Hemisphere, and the beginning of autumn in the Southern Hemisphere. This way, for any hemisphere we get summer, autumn, winter and spring every year. Why do we find variation in day and night durations in different part of the year? Let's check that now. This is summer solstice position. Look at the regions of light and darkness on the globe, as viewed from the side, and from top as well. 
From this, we can draw the following conclusions. At the equator, the day and night are of equal duration. As we go up north, duration of the day increases and that of the night decreases. At a latitude of 66.5 degrees corresponding to Arctic Circle and beyond, up to North Pole, the duration of day is 24 hours, and with no night at all. On the other hand, as we go south of the equator, duration of night increases, and that of day decreases, and beyond the Antarctic Circle, up to South Pole, the duration of night is 24 hours, with no daytime. This is winter solstice position. See the regions of light and darkness. At the equator the durations of day and night are equal. As we go down south in latitude, duration of day increases and that of night decreases. At a latitude of minus 66.5 degrees corresponding to Antarctic Circle and beyond, up to South Pole, the duration of day is 24 hours while the duration of night is zero. On the other hand as we go up north from the equator, duration of night increases and duration of day decreases, and beyond Arctic Circle, up to the North Pole, the duration of night is 24 hours, and zero duration of day. This is autumnal equinox position. Look at the close-up of the globe looking from side. Looking at the lighted up regions and regions of shadow, one can conclude that duration of night and day are equal all over the globe. During this period, day and night are equal all over the places. Same thing happens during vernal equinox. You can check it out yourself. Let's look at the moon phases. This is summer solace disposition. Bring the moon to the new moon position between the sun and the earth. Now the moon cannot be viewed from the earth. People in daytime half cannot see the moon because of the glare of the sun. From the other half, experiencing night, the moon is below the horizon, and therefore cannot be seen at all. It can be seen that though the moon is between sun and the earth, they are not aligned, and the shadow of the moon does not fall on the earth. So solar eclipse does not occur on every new moon day. This is due to the fact that the path of the moon around the earth is inclined to the ecliptic. Now to see the crescent moon, move the arm to 45 degrees in the counterclockwise direction. Again people having daytime cannot view the moon because of the sun's glare. For people in the region having a time between dusk and about 9 pm, the illuminated portion of the moon can be seen in the shape of the crescent. Since the crescent increases in size as days increase, it is called the ascending crescent, or waxing crescent. To see the half moon, move the arm by another 45 degrees is such that the angle made by sun, earth, and moon is 90 degrees. This moon can be seen between sunset and midnight, and as if only the half portion of the moon is lit. Now let's see the gibbous moon. Move the arm by another 45 degrees. Here the lit portion of the moon is more than half. In fact, except a crescent region the rest of the moon is visible. This is called gibbous moon. Next comes the full moon. Move the arm further 45 degrees. Now the moon and the sun are on the opposite sides of the earth. In this position the full round moon is lit and it can be seen from sunset all through the night till dawn. Here again, though the earth is in between the moon and the sun, lunar eclipse does not take place. Moving the arm further by 45 degrees in steps, you will again see a gibbous moon, half moon, and crescent moon. But, these are in waning phase. Since the size of the lit up moon increases from the new moon till full moon, this phase is called the waxing phase. The phase from full moon to new moon is called waning phase. If the moon was lit on the right side during the waxing phase, it will be lit on the left during the waning phase. Lunar and solar eclipse. Bring the Earth corresponding to the autumnal equinox. 
with the durations of the days and nights are the same all over the globe. Move the arm of the moon slowly sweeping behind the earth. Notice that just before the moon gets into the shadow of the earth, it will be a full moon. Slowly the moon gets in the shadow, getting completely swallowed by the darkness, which corresponds to total lunar eclipse. The eclipse lasts as long as the moon is in the shadow of the earth. As you move the moon slowly further, it gradually comes out of the shadow, and once again a full moon can be viewed. As you continue to move the moon towards the front of the earth, the shadow of the moon can be seen sweeping a small region on the earth. This shadow region sweeps across the earth due to the rotation of the earth, and the motion of the moon. People in the umbral region of the shadow, experience total solar eclipse, and people in the penumbral region, will experience partial solar eclipse. It should be mentioned, that width of a shadow region sweeping past the earth is fairly large, as seen in the model. This is not a real scenario, rather a design compromise. In an actual solar eclipse, the width of swept shadow region is very small, just a few square kilometers. When the sun just tries to peep out of the moon after a total solar eclipse, it appears as a beautiful diamond ring. To demonstrate eclipses, positions of the Earth are taken corresponding to any of the equinox positions, but eclipses to various degrees can occur at some other positions too. You can experiment. And that concludes the demonstration of this model, made by Professor M. A. Ramaswamy of Bangalore, India. All rights of this video is copyrighted. Usage of any part or whole without permission is strictly prohibited.